What's up everyone, I'm Cardi C, the Baseball Card Collector, and today we are going to be talking about Panini America's blockchain. So, back on December 19th, 2019, last decade, Panini announced that they would be the first officially licensed trading card company to release cards on the blockchain. My first thought was, wow, hold up, this is the company that cannot get a first off the line release right. Their website breaks down every time. How can they possibly institute the blockchain in the correct way? And then I started thinking like, this does not have to be destined, destined to fail. Um, yes, Panini's vision could be nothing more than just a marketing ploy using buzzwords to drum up excitement for the latest fad, but there's real potential and opportunity for this to be an innovation that changes the hobby forever. Using their press release, we can start to sort of pull out their motives for releasing the blockchain and look to what their vision is. Uh, what I'm more interested in though is looking at other collectible based blockchains and seeing what the true potential of blockchain technology is for the sports card community. So before we dive in and have a conversation today on what a blockchain could look like, we have to define a couple key terms. The first is blockchain. So according to a website called Block Geeks, uh, the blockchain is a digital ledger that's automatically updated for every transaction. Picture a spreadsheet that is duplicated thousands of times across a network of computers, then imagine that the network is designed to regularly update this spreadsheet, and then you have a basic understanding of blockchain. So what does the blockchain in a sports card application look like? It's really an open marketplace where all transactions are publicly available for buyers and sellers and authenticity is guaranteed. Modification slash alteration of the cards is not possible uh, without being identified by other users on the blockchain. So uh, that's number one, blockchain. I'll provide some self-study materials in the description below if you're interested in any of these key terms and you want to do some, uh, some additional research on your own. So that's number one, blockchain. Number two is tokenization. So Tokenization is the creation of a digital asset or digital identifier that is backed by a physical asset or a physical good. Uh, so your sports card application means your digital cards are secured by a physical card. Pretty straightforward. Um, and then the, the last term we have to identify is non-fungible token. So digital tokens, as we just talked about, are created but non-fungible tokens are distinguishable from one another each token is unique and it creates a digital scarcity so that there are only so many tokens to go around this isn't a jpeg or a picture that you can copy and paste and send to someone it's a unique code that you only have the ownership over so your sports card application is just like serial numbers. Serial numbers and non-fungible tokens can be assigned to sports cards to prove their scarcity in the digital realm, uh, just as serial numbers do to cards in, uh, in real life. So now that we have our basic terms and definitions out of the way, let's take a look at what Panini has told us so far. Panini's press release following the hype video stated the following. The release of the blockchain tra trading cards will incorporate Panini's popular National Treasures design and will feature 100 athletes. Panini's blockchain trading cards will launch in early January 2020 and will be sold in an auction format in US dollars as opposed to a digital currency. 10 new cards will be released each week. The blockchain asset will live on a closed Panini platform where Sports fans and collectors can buy, sell, and store their blockchain trading card assets. Each card is a unique one-of-one -one card that not only includes a blockchain digital asset, but will be accompanied by a physical version of the card that includes an autograph of the respective player. In some cases, the physical card will include a piece of memorabilia. 
The blockchain asset will be an exact representation of the physical version of the card. Panini also plans to release blockchain versions of the card in upcoming Panini physical trading card products in the NFL, NBA, and MLB PA. With some cards selling on the secondary market for six figures as the popularity of trading cards continues to grow in the global marketplace, the blockchain technology also ensures another level of authentication for Panini's products and high-value cards. So there's a lot of words in there that don't necessarily give us a lot of information, but there's three things that we know. Number one is that the initial cards that are going to be auctioned off and included on the blockchain are national treasures cards or national treasure designs that are going to be sold through auction, presumably on a Panini platform. Number two, each card is a one of one card secured by a physical version of the card. Panini is telling us here that they are tokenizing the card, which we all know what tokenization means now and they're making it into a non-fungible token. It's a unique digital asset that is related or attached to the physical version of the card and marked up with specific card metadata and specific card attributes. So that's number two. Number three is that Panini is planning on releasing blockchain versions of these cards in upcoming physical products. So those are the only thing, three things we know right now. Uh, it gives us a little bit of information, but opens up a whole host of questions. Uh, a couple that I jotted down right away. Are blockchain cards exclusive to the online auction platform? Are the cards that are included in the blockchain auctions no longer going to be released in the physical packout products? Are there going to be non-blockchain versions of these cards in the physical boxes. In one of the pictures, they had teased a one of one Zion logo man from NT. Um, the blockchain version of it is going to be released on the auction, but are they not going to include that in the physical pack out? Because if that Chase product is gone, uh, Panini sales are gonna suffer greatly. Are there any fees or restrictions around the auction process? Can I request a physical copy of my card to be delivered to me? How do I record offline purchases or the sale of the blockchain card if it's even possible? Are the blockchain versions of the card going to be physically packed out? Or are there going to be redemption cards that you'll have to request shipment for? The list of questions goes on and on and on. But what Panini is really trying to do here is what Topps has done with StockX. There are folks at Panini who see sales in the secondary market of these chase cards go for thousands of dollars, and they'd like to see more of that change go into their pocket. So they're introducing this medium as a way to help control the secondary market price of these elusive chase cards when they initially hit the market. Uh, the first auctions of Panini's blockchain assets go live on Monday, January 6th. So instead of speculating on answers to the questions that I, I just went over, let's look at what other companies in the collectibles space have done uh, to implement blockchain successfully. Despite Panini's claims that they're going to be the first officially licensed trading card company to release trading cards on blockchain technology, there's a company that has already implemented the technology. So Rare, a company that has struck up exclusive licensing deals with over 25 soccer clubs, uses Ethereum-based blockchain technology to develop and release digital-only blockchain cards. I'll include a, a link to so Rare's website below, but we're really not looking at an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. They don't have cards backed up by a physical asset. Uh, the gold standard of digital blockchain tra trading cards is a company and platform called CryptoKitties, which also uses Ethereum blockchain technology and has proved that digital only collectibles um, in the marketplace for them is viable. You have sales of these digital kitties going for hundreds of thousands of dollars they've generated uh, 25 million dollars in sales on on these kittens uh, since 
the the platform's inception. But like I said, these are not backed by physical assets, so it's really not a fair comparison to see what they're doing and compare it to what Panini's trying to do. Um, without the physical card in an owner's possession or knowing that the owner will be able to access the physical version of the card, I think any sports card memorabilia or sports collecting blockchain is destined to fail. People want to have the physical asset in their possession on display so they can put it on their desk and they can show their friends, here are the cards, here's the memorabilia that I have. Uh, so that's that's one hurdle that they're they're gonna have to overcome. But so if we want to build a vision of what the hobby can be and can be become, we have to look to a more parallel comparison, and um, we look to the arts for that. And there's no better company that has done that than the Blockchain Art Collective. So the Blockchain Art Collective is a company that really deals with three items. They have the object. So in their case, it's a baseball card, an artifact, a piece of art, uh, a secure physical ID, and a secure digital ID. So a representative from the blockchain art collective comes out and authenticates the piece, whether it's a piece of art or a, an artifact or a piece of memorabilia, and affixes a secure physical ID to it. So they take a sticker and slap it on. The sticker comes with a near field communication chip, an NFC chip. It's sort of like the technology you have in your, uh, your debit card or your credit card to just tap and then you pay. So they, it comes with one of those chips that has a unique identifier in it that's connected to the digital asset of that item on the blockchain. Anyone with the app of the Blockchain Art Collective can go up to that sticker, scan the sticker, and verify its authenticity. They still haven't nailed down the physical transfer of ownership from the research that I have done, but there, this is more of a reflection of the items that they're authenticating and they're putting on the blockchain. We're talking like wall murals in LA and priceless artifacts that are subject to lots of regulation, not just a very liquid sports card. But now with all this information on blockchain technology, looking at what other companies have done to successfully implement this, this type of technology, what does an effective implementation of blockchain look like for the sports card community? So to really understand the potential impact that blockchain can have on the hobby, we can start to paint a picture of the changes that we could see. So I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five items that we're just going to rattle off. And this will just be the tip of the iceberg. The potential is a tectonic shift in the industry in a niche community that has historically been reluctant to change. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, challenge what you're seeing coming out of Panini, but here is the potential. All serial numbered cards are packaged out as redemptions with a digital token or QR code printed on them so that consumers can instantly access their digital asset, which is secured by a physical card held by the manufacturer. That's number one. Number two, consumers can request the physical card be shipped to them in a tamper-proof case with the secure physical ID verifying its authenticity. Number two. Number three, the blockchain provides a decentralized ledger in a quasi-marketplace to make deals with other hobbyists. Shared ownership of this digital ledger creates a trustless environment where you no longer have to worry about whether a person's going to scam you out of a purchase or whether they actually have ownership of a car they're trying to sell. Not to mention for sellers, fees are no longer a material expense. You're talking about pennies on the dollar to create a new transaction on the blockchain, um, not fees paid to eBay in excess of 10% and another 2% for PayPal. That would will be um, items of the past. 
So that's number three. Number four, the grading card companies hop onto the bandwagon and create their own version of the blockchain with tamper-proof physical IDs. If you have a rock card that wasn't added to the blockchain through the manufacturing process, you can send it over to BGS or PSA and they'll grade it, they'll authenticate it, they'll tag their card or the card with the physical ID and transfer the digital asset over to you. So that's number four. Number five is that partnerships will be struck between the grading companies and the manufacturers, which result in greatly reduced turnaround times on cards that have already been added to the blockchain. Additional card attributes and metadata, such as your grading results, centering, surface, edges, corners, are added to the ledger on the blockchain and make it impossible to alter. For a niche hobby that has historically been resistant to change, I'm very skeptical that they're going to have a successful implementation the first time around, but I am so excited at what the future holds. This could be a total game changer for the hobby, and I'm very, very excited to see see what happens. But So what do you guys think? Are you skeptical that Panini's just using blockchain as a buzzword to drive more traffic to their site, or do you believe they're truly invested in changing the industry for the better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't liked this video and subscribed already, I'd really appreciate the, the support. But till next time, I'm Cardi C, the baseball card collector. I'll catch you guys later.